There we are. There's Louisa. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Let's tell the audience where you're coming from today. I am coming from the UK. Um, yes. <laughs> so shout out to everybody here, but also I, I gather there's some other people from the UK here as well, which is fantastic. Yeah. So awesome. Thanks for joining us. And you you, you just watched the last two, right? The last two. <laughs> did so many notes I loved it it was absolutely wonderful so thank you to Barbara and Linda that was just wonderful I want to ask you real quick before we get into our conversation what was your biggest takeaway from from those uh sessions from both of them okay so it's Mm -hmm. it's like writing down brain tattoos that's the way I like to take notes it's like what's that one nugget that I'm going Mm -hmm. to take away and from Linda was the in, uh, asking to the intention to learn and understand with each other. Mm. So coming at a conversation that may be difficult around that, I thought, oh, so good. Mm-hmm. And then with Barbara, Barbara was really making me smile around being able to bring in more feminine energy because I was just chuckling to myself because I have <laughs> this plant here. <laughs> For that very reason. <laughs> feminine, the bloom. I am feminine, honestly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I love it. I, you know, I'm like, I have a candle here that's like me being feminine right now because the flowers are going to die. It's so cold in the mountains. <laughs> okay, awesome. So I'm going to read, I'm going to read uh, our bio real quick to start to introduce everyone to you. Oh, Barbara just said the, the orchard is shaped exactly as a pussy is. is mm-hmm. Yeah. There we go. Surround yourself by orchards, ladies yeah. <laughs> and men. Okay, <laughs> so let's let's get into this. So me and Louisa here, we're uh, about to talk to you about a, an abundance mindset, how to level up your income. Woo, who here wants to make more money? Give me a big yes in the chat box. I hope everybody here is like, hell yes, hell yes, hell yes. There we go, yes, yes. I wanna make more money, right? Let's go. Yes. Money time. We're getting into this conversation. (laughs) I love talking about money. All right. So Louisa, Louisa, is it Havers or Havers? Havers. 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 Okay. Louisa Havers is an internationally renowned master transformational coach, the creator of the Helix Method, a master Akashic Records teacher and consultant, Soul Journeys Method, and business mentor. She enables high achievers and coaches to unlock their superpowers, turbocharge soul aligned magnetism. Oh, I love that. And lift the ceiling in both their lives and businesses. It's a journey Louisa knows works as she's personally undertaken it. Years spent leading change in the highly pressurized and stressful social services sector led to shingles and chronic fatigue, compelling her to break free from the corporate matrix of overwork. It was the first step to creating her own life of freedom and dream business income. Louisa enables clients across the globe to activate quantum leaps to success in their own journey to fulfillment, self-love, and a six to seven figure income. That's what I'm talking about. Louisa's mission is to help 1 million souls to thrive, yes, as they live their life's purpose. Woo, let's welcome uh, Louisa right here to the stage. We already did that a little bit, but official welcome, official welcome. So thank you so much for joining us. And I'm really, really excited to get into this conversation. And I, I'm our audience is too, um, from all the yeses that we got <laughs> as far as leveling up. So let's start with abundance mindset, okay? What, what is an abundance mindset? An abundance mindset is, in a nutshell, seeing the world is always having more than enough for everybody. There's plenty to go around. And this is really key for being able to have that um, mindset within business, of course, so that we're not operating from a lack or a scarcity mindset. So abundance is having that ability to know with certainty that even if you can't see the result yet Mm. there is always more money coming Mm. there is always more clients coming there's always more love coming because of course you can apply it to any area in life and how you do one thing is how you do everything so patterns you know that um, we see operating within our own businesses within our relationship with money may also be reflected in how we're showing up in other areas of our life in our relationships you know Mm. intimate relationships uh, our home environment and and all the things so we want to have an abundant mindset not only in our in our relationship with money but actually across all aspects of our lives absolutely how you said it how we do one thing is how we do everything 
Yeah, it really is. And and the key is being able to to and to and to love money as well. If somebody says to me, I've just been in uh, did a, a masterclass last week around manifesting more money. And whenever people say I hate money, I'm like, that's telling me that it's probably you're probably pushing it away. Mm-hmm. And yes, it can feel really stressful if there isn't enough currently. Um, but how we're treating our relationship with money is going to impact our magnetism and how we're attracting it attracting it to us because everything is energy I loved how I could hear you talking about that I was like yeah she's speaking my language (laughs) yes exactly (laughs) you know I take it one step further in the sense of you know from an abundance mindset we want to have an abundance wi-fi because everything is energy our thoughts are electric um our heart is magnetic in terms of what we're sending out into the to the universe and this is what I call you know, it's our aura, it's our, our our magnetism, and I call it our human Wi-Fi, what we're attracting to us. We want to have an abundant human Wi-Fi so that we're sending out the right messages and the right signals about what we want to attract to us in, 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 uh, in our lives. Yeah, I love that. Magnet. So really quick, I'm just going to say this. and my, my, my clients that are on this know this, but I have a word of the year and it's magnet. Yeah. I am a magnet. Yeah, attract, attracting and bringing. And that's like how I'm going to operate from that space. Um, so I love that we're, we're going to get into magnetism a little bit. So before we go there, I really want to address the money blocks in the room. Okay. Who here thinks that they have a money block or a negative relationship with money? Who here thinks money is really hard to get? Who thinks money is scarce? Mm -hmm. a couple people here okay and on the flip i'm curious to know who has it who thinks that they have an abundant money mindset let's read the room who thinks Mm -hmm. they have a great fantastic relationship with money they love it it's easy it flows i feel like a failure because i'm not as well off as my peers ah comparing I know it's abundant, but feeling into it has been challenging. Okay, we so we got a lot. We got a lot of yeah. Okay, working on abundance, money, but drop back to scarcity at times. I love it, but it's not coming how I want it. Mm. Oh, that's gonna be a good one to talk about. Mind, heart, different beliefs. Uh huh. Working on it all the time. Uh huh. Okay, we got some work to do, I think, right? (laughs) Let's get this, let's get this going, right? Okay, so we got a lot of scarcity blocks, I'm seeing. Um, I'm also, like, I'm seeing here, like, from the chat that everyone's working on it, right? Like, we're working on it. We know that we want to be abundant. We get that. We understand that. But it's like, there's something in the way. So how do we start to break through these blocks of scarcity, of fear, of the old patterning of like, I got to work so hard to make that money. It's never enough. I'm scared to spend money. I don't deserve to make money. That's a big one. Who here doesn't deserve, thinks they don't deserve to make money. That's a big one. It's a big one. one. How do we start to move (laughs) through that stuff? The icky stuff that gets in our way. Yes. Well, I have a technique. I can see some of my, my, my clients here as well, (laughs) which is wonderful. Um, to uh so they'll know this one but one of the techniques that i teach that i can really quickly show everyone now is is to really find out well what is the root belief that is holding me back and often um, because we can tell ourselves one story so we think it's because of xyz that's like our conscious mind chatter going this is because of this blah 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 and then actually underneath we're holding a different a different layer so we can often hold different more dual beliefs we can hold I do deserve it and I don't deserve it so we Mm. think we deserve it because we work really really hard and then on one level we're feeling like we don't deserve it because we start comparing ourselves to everybody else so there's a lot going on in our energy field Mm. Um, so one of the things you can do is to do some muscle testing I don't know if people have done muscle testing before but it is such a brilliant way to find out and to really unlock the subconscious to find out actually what is it that I truly believe not the the, the voice that I'm listening to necessarily so that once you get to that root cause, you can start to shift it and to change it. And of course, if we're in that space of feeling really, really fearful, so where there isn't, we're not seeing enough money around, the fight, flight and freeze has been triggered. 
the first thing we need to do there is to soothe that so that we can start to then open up our energy field to then start to change those thoughts and beliefs, etc. So there's loads of different ways you can um, muscle test. My favorite way is the sway technique where you use your body as a dousing device. So I don't know if you're familiar with that. Basically, essentially, and I'll just talk through it quickly because people can kind of follow along and do it <laughs> as I tell you how you how you can do it so basically we'll just do it with things that you know for a fact to be true like your name so there's no attachment to the statement that you're going to muscle test on and then to do it with something that you you know you know not to be true so you could just borrow somebody else's name and say my name is so I would say the thing that I know to be true is my name is Louisa Havers and then the thing I know to be not true is my name is Garfield say for example <laughs> Um, and so you get a baseline of, um, you know, what's happening in your subconscious. So of course, my subconscious knows I am Louisa Havers. Mm -hmm. So how you do it with the sway technique is you stand up. And if you are unable to stand, you can do it sit sitting down on the edge of your seat. But you stand up with your um, knees hip width apart, your feet hip width apart. If you've got high heels on, you want to take them off so your feet are flat on the ground. It's great to close your eyes. So you're like you're about to go into a meditation. And if you've never done this before, I would give yourself a quick thymus thump, which is just tapping there for about 15 seconds on the thymus gland. And then from that space, just to notice your breathing, how your lungs inflate and deflate as you're breathing. Notice how your heart is beating. This helps you to get out of your head. And from that space, we're going to just muscle test something you know to be true. So I invite you to say, my name is, and to say your proper name, say it out loud, my name is Louisa Havers. And then you'll notice, and just allow yourself some time to notice what you notice. Do you go forward slightly? Do you go backwards slightly? Do you feel a pull? Most people will feel a pull moving forwards, which is a yes. And then you can muscle test with something you know not to be true. So if I was to say, just to kind of sink down into that, as if I'm going into a meditation state and saying my name is Garfield, I can literally feel, even though I'm doing the sitting down, my energy go backwards and pull me back. Does that make sense? And often yes. you can feel it along where your heart chakra is at the front and the back. You feel like there's a there's an assemblage point line there where it just pulls you along backwards and forwards. If anyone's struggling with this, what I would just mentally say to yourself is to say, OK, I'm instructing my subconscious, go forwards for a yes and go backwards for a no and then to try it again. OK, this is awesome. This is, a, this is landing for people. So this is where you can do muscle testing to find things like so. I am deserving of earning whatever the amount of money is that you're wanting to bring in. I am undeserving of earning that amount. So to test the beliefs from both, both aspects, because you can hold both. So often, sometimes people will say, I am deserving. I muscle tested it. I'm like, yeah, but did you test it the other way around as well? Because <laughs> they can hide. And what can happen is, so we can hold these beliefs thinking that so, for example, you know, deservingness, undeservingness, worthiness, unworthiness. Those are the two core things that are underpinning everything to do with that mindset, whether we have determined that we are worthy or are unworthy um, or deserving or undeserving. But also what comes into play with this, because, of course, we have values about how we want to live across all aspects of our life. So we might say we want more money and then the subconscious is terrified of there being an impact. We were talking earlier, Katie, about we think we have to work really hard to earn more money. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things I, I recognize uh, with, with my clients is many will come to me saying, I want to earn more money, but I've burnt out before and I'm terrified of burning out. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, the subconscious, because it's trying to protect us and to keep us safe, is not going to want you to burn out again. Or there might be a fear that actually if I earn more money because we saw these successful people when we were growing up, let's say, never spending any time with their family, mm -hmm. we're going to hold ourselves back because we think we can only have one or the other. It's like that either or I can have love or money. I can have time or money. And so we start to see this stickiness showing up in our money life <laughs> and in our relationships with money because we're not wanting to... Um, you know, sacrifice something in our relationships with our family, for example, or with our health. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys, you guys getting it? 
yes or no in the chat box. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why I love muscle testing because you can find it actually, where is it? What is it? It might be you need to do the healing in, in your relationship with your, you know, healing the, the fear around burning out. And then that's going to free up being able to actually I'm safe to make more money. Mm. And so that's why I love muscle testing, because you're able to really identify what is the root to then to be able to change it. And you change it through once you've identified, OK, yep, I can feel some resistance there. That's oh, mm. <laughs> um, revealing what's really going on in the subconscious. And then you can change it through imprinting into your you know, subconscious and into your human Wi-Fi, as I call it. You know, going right. Okay, that belief that I'm unworthy of having ten thousand a month or twenty thousand, a hundred thousand, whatever it is for people, I'm letting that go. I've decided that is, yeah, it's not for me. I release that from all levels of my consciousness, and then being able to go. Do you know what? I'm going to take a new belief for a spin. <laughs> I'm going to embody this one and to live from the energy of having this this belief and see what starts to create and what i really see is as you start to do this imprinting and changing your energy field you become more magnetic and your manifesting becomes faster and faster and you're able to have more courage and confidence to follow on those inspired actions that come to you rather than procrastinating on them because you, you get excited because you start to see the results you're like yes how how quick can we go <laughs> as the flow starts to activate oh yes <laughs> I love all of this right now. And I've done muscle testing before, but I've never done it. I've had someone do it to me. So ah. this was, yeah, I've had it done to me uh, as far as uh, certain medications for me mm -hmm. to take for my gut. Um, so this is interesting to, to say, because I, I know I saw a lot of people in the chat like, that's nuts. That's crazy. <laughs> Literally when I was saying, you know, and I wasn't even saying out loud. I was just thinking it because I didn't want to blast your, your ears. <laughs> but I did. Yeah. I, I tuned back and for me I was when I said my own name in my head I was like kind of like this sway thing forward it's that's so interesting and it's it's just such a great tool to use because the subconscious stays stays dormant until we allow it to come out mm. and that's really where the conditioning gets to be not in this conscious brain the conscious brain doesn't make the long-term impact right it's it's what's really the layers beneath or what what show up in our exactly. behaviors yeah an example to um i'm sure people are familiar with this but the subconscious is so powerful which is why we want to imprint and change the subconscious there so all the reasons you know we go yeah i want more money it's going to be amazing <laughs> conscious mind and the mm -hmm. subconscious is up to something completely different going no it's not safe you're going to burn out <laughs> um, yeah hang on guys we've got to like, get some protection in here let's throw her a big dose of procrastination that's gonna stop her mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all right she's safe now and it's a bit like um I uh, maybe this is just me with driving but I <laughs> um you know often I will have um particularly if you're going to the same place that you normally go to quite frequently whether it's a local supermarket or going to collect somebody from the station etc and I remember one day driving down to one end of town to go and pick up my son who went to the pub and then the other I was meant to be picking up my other son who was at the gym and at the both ends of the, ta the town now I set off with my conscious mind going we're going here but obviously halfway through the journey the subconscious took over and I ended up in completely the wrong place oh, I've done this <laughs> and we yeah. can do that in business because we think we're in control we've got our business plan or we've set the intention for the money we want to call in subconscious decides it's going in a different direction mm -hmm. if we're not curating and taking care of our abundant mindset and doing that in the work daily that's really key it's like a a cup we need to keep topping up so that we keep feeling the the, the vibrations and, and doing those imprinting so that we aren't allowing the subconscious just to to go off and take control mm -hmm. so my next question is so we have let, we're creating awareness as to what is this with the with one of your techniques which is the muscle testing on how to really tune in to what the subconscious brain is actually thinking by asking specific questions right hmm. so then we get the awareness so let's say we got that awareness and we find out that it is a scarcity thing or that you know it's a it's a i got i gotta work really hard so or a safety there's a safety piece where i'm protecting myself because i think making more money is actually a gonna show like, I think a lot of people have this story where that I'm not going to be uh, there for my family. 
Like I'm going to have, that's a big one. Like more money means more time at work, which means less time with my family and I'm not willing to sacrifice that. So let's just say we, we bring these things to the surface. How do we start to then recondition the subconscious mind to be more in alignment with what the conscious mind wants? Yes. Yes. So we create from our identity. So we want to really be able to be, okay, so what is the identity of the me who has all the time with my family, is really healthy and has the income that I desire? Who is that version of me? And to be able to consider if you were to journal that out and to write it out, what does that version of you look like connecting with? What kinds of beliefs are they believing and and holding? to then be able to see what's the difference between where you are now and where you want to be, knowing that you can change it through doing the muscle testing work. And this is stuff I do all the time, because like I said, you're always uh, topping up your, your cup. And then being able to go, okay, well, these beliefs from this current identity or this current mindset where I'm recognizing I'm feeling lack because I'm seeing it in my environment around me, I'm going to let those ones go by doing that releasing work. And now I've got my identity that I want to, step into I'm going to embody and imprint it and then doing the the work whether this is through affirmations and I love doing affirmations to music high vibe music really lifts your your energy energy field and it imprints into the subconscious as well visualization so that you can and coming at the visualization visualization from a place of it's a memory it's already happened Mm. it's already done that is key because the subconscious isn't going to know no, she's just imagining, you know, yeah. is being able to go, actually, I'm imagining it, but in the past, it's not a vision, it's already happened. And then that's where you've embodied that identity. Does that make sense? And that's when you mm-hmm. can start the manifesting starts to. That's, that's key, because I, I feel like a lot of people hear visualization, right? And nobody knows how to do it. <laughs> it's like, what do yeah. you mean? Do I just imagine myself like out out on my in my dream house you know like it's so far in the future like it's something that's in my grasp like I'm going to get it and what you just said the key piece that you just mentioned and I'm just like reinforcing this is like no this has already happened this is the past self yes yeah so you know how you can if we were to all think might not be able to remember this but because short-term memory but if you think about what you did yesterday it's a memory and often people will go I can I can imagine the picture in my mind's eye and it's sort of here we, we position that memory behind us. Does that make sense? Whereas if we're thinking for the future, we put it in front of us. So we want to bring our visualization, visualization behind us as a memory, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that. Yep. We're going to yeah, that. yeah. So it's, a, it's a way of just being able to embody it. So next time you're visualizing, just invite you to think about just imagining it. It's in the past. How did that feel? It's already done. Like, how amazing hmm. Yeah. Like you're already you're embodying embodiment, right? Like we're embodying the current emotions that are also attached to the feeling and the emotion stick. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We want the good emotion sticking. <laughs> yeah. Not the negative ones of the things that have happened no. for real in the past that might not have felt good that have bled into the future, <laughs> which is the reconditioning. Yeah. And so this is where it's like, so imagining whatever your intention is for the income that you want to uh, attract to you this month uh, or next month, because it's nearly the end of this month, let's say. So let's say, you know, wherever you are. So you've got th- in 30 days time, imagine that you are telling Katie you know how amazing it was that you'd already done it it's already done and you're visualizing that and you're um seeing it as you know it's a memory I remember when I told Katie I'd hit that income goal etc cetera, etc cetera, mm-hmm. and how good that feels and it's very different to putting it in the future and how we push it away from ourselves yeah like it's going to feel this good when I do it yeah it's, it's a know. subtle tweak you know tweak but really really powerful it's a super powerful tweak let's see Catherine we just said super Annette said super love the imagining and going into the feeling yes and Mm. are you saying Catherine just said are you saying that you never have to sacrifice one area of your life for more in another time money family yeah that so there may be times where you need to focus more for example like um, I know there have been points in my life where I've gone right guys we need to focus on this but it's not a sacrifice. It's just a reprioritizing. So the thing is, is 
does it feel mm-hmm. like a sacrifice because then that's you're not going to want to do that there will be some resistance does that make sense yeah totally that's what creates the resistance is the feeling of the sacrifice we want to eliminate feeling like a sacrifice we can prioritize and balance mm-hmm. yeah don't sacrifice one over the other yeah that's yeah reframe reframe yeah. it yeah, yeah, because that's then going to give it a negative association and it's going to put out a negative energy field. Exactly. So some people may be thinking like, I really want to, you know, uh, create X, Y, Z in my business or um, for the income. But I know that actually I've got a two year old kid. This isn't the time. Um, my priority is to be a mom and to be around that child. So I've only got, you know, time when they're asleep in their naps, etc. Mm-hmm. And so you might want to redefine your goals or find a new way, a new business system that's going to create, get some more support. And so you can do that without sacrificing your time with your kid. Does that make sense? So there's always a way. There is always a way. Mm-hmm. Yep. I want to embrace what you are next. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. So as far as the, the magnetism piece, that energy piece, it's, I feel like it's been a word that's been kind of coming around a lot in the, let's see, the coaching realm or the, mm-hmm. you know, personal development realm, like magnetism and, and, and really calling in and, and, and energy. And, and um, something that I learned from one of my other master classes is that money is energy, right? And I'd like, I'd like for you to dive into that a little bit, because when I had this, when I, I heard this before, it allowed something to click in me. And all of a sudden, my relationship with money, dramatic, I mean, honestly, dramatically changed when I didn't think of it as this piece of paper that was vital to my existence for living and also attached to my self-worth. But when I started to define it as it's just energy. And if a lot of it goes, cause I got in a, let's say I got in a car accident, which I did a couple of weeks ago. Right. And the insurance wouldn't run. And I'm like, okay, right. Here's a thousand dollars because of the conditioning I'd done, it's just, I was like, okay, whatever, it's a thousand dollars. It's going to come right back. Yes. It's going to yeah. come right back. I'm not going to stress about this. Why so I'll spend $20,000 on coaching for myself. It will come back. I'm not afraid now to spend money on myself. Unlike before where there's some big major blocks with it. And for me, it was really understanding that it's just an energy thing. It's an energy thing. Money is not hard. It's an energy thing. So for people that are maybe, in the, in the position still where it's just, it's, it's, it's really blocking them from being able to, to put themselves first to make, like maybe to finally uh, go to a functional medicine doctor and get like that testing or to hire the coach that you've always wanted to have, but yeah, they're five or $10,000 a month or, or for the program or whatever. And it, they just, they're just finding it really hard to, to spend the month, that kind of money on themselves do you find that there's a common theme with that in your business or, or I don't, you know what yeah. I'm trying to say? Like how to help people break through that. Yeah. Yeah. So well, one thing I would say is if some, anyone's in that space where um, they're feeling like their bank account is, you know, in uh, less than that they want and, and, and all the things in it and it triggers them when they're looking at it just to breathe and to know that your bank account number is just a data point in time. Mm. and I'm just pausing there so you can just kind of like receive that whoever that message is for and know okay it doesn't mean anything about you money the journey of money and money is an energy it's we can think of it as money <laughs> so being able to think of it and one of the things I love doing and I invite everybody to to do this as well is to think about how do we spend money do we spend it and it's very easy to do that and everything's digital these days so you just press some numbers and you can kind of It's a process without actually infusing love into how you've spent that money. So one of the things I like to think about, and I always have fun playing with this, is like when I'm down the supermarket, even if I'm just using my card, if I am using cash, is to visualize the journey that that piece of money is going on. So it's come from my home where it's fed my children and me and it's paid for the mortgage or whatever that little piece of money has done, the contribution to our household. And now it's going to the lovely lady at the till and her some of it, because it's probably going to a big corporation is going to pay for <laughs> yeah. uh, wages, potentially. And she's mm-hmm. going to go home and be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, feed her family and pay for her rent, etc. 
And the journey of money doesn't stop there. This is where you can just see how abundant money is. That little bit of energy is then going to go from her home into somebody else's home. And it is just infinite. It keeps on going. So one of the things I invite you to do, and just allow yourself to feel into this, is to whenever you're spending money, to bless it and to visualize mm-hmm. the gratitude of the other person that is receiving it is going to feel. It's a way of doing spiritual money laundering because we're cleaning and blessing the money as we're as it's leaving our home and going into other people's homes so that we're not sharing the energy of fear and scarcity as we're spending money but we're actually sending it out with love and of course what we send out we receive i love that (laughs) (laughs) like that really brought it home i think like wow how powerful is that just the practice of gratitude changes the whole energy flow yeah like i'm not just spending money to spend money like I'm, I'm i'm understanding the 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 ripple effect that it has on this planet in someone else's life and on your own and how it's all it's all connected i love that so thank you i really like that really brought it home um Okay, so we just got a couple minutes left. So, of course, I want to ask you, well, that was for me, what stuck? <laughs> but but out, of, out of all the things that we talked about, what do you think is like, you know, that one thing for people to really remember, to really tune into? To remember that you create anything that you desire and to do the inner work so that, because often we can shy away from the thing that we really need to, to, to focus on. Actually, it links with what Linda was saying around where we're feeling vulnerable about something, or if there's anywhere money is triggering us, lean in, that's the gift. The gift for the healing is there. Um, and from that space, to, so that you can really embody the person who's already done this. You've already done it. You've already made that income. You're already at that next level, so that your visualizations are behind you. Your mem- You're recalling memories. Mm. Yes, I love all of it. Okay. (laughs) And of course, I'm going to ask, so what does thriving mean to you? Thriving means to me, I think it's, I require more of myself so that I can thrive. And so it's having higher standards and expectations that I can grow towards and being in a space of allowing in the overflow. Mm. Because we can often contract back with it's too much <laughs> no. um, I see that a lot as people are growing and thriving is it suddenly can be like oh my god I can't how can I handle all this support and this thriving and this money and this all this love whatever area of life it's coming in so we want to require more of ourselves so that we can allow ourselves to thrive and and not to be in not to tolerate so anywhere we're tolerating anything we want to let that go because that's going to be impacting our ability to thrive and to thrive beyond what we even thought thriving was. Yeah. The next is. level of thrive. <laughs> next level. We're all here to next level, right? <laughs> like this is about up leveling this whole this whole master class. So I, I absolutely love that. And I know that you have a free gift I for do. All our wonderful listeners. So what is that gift right now? I am so excited to give this to you. Okay. So my free gift is an abundance code activation in the Akashic Records, which will clear blocks and align you to at a soul level of consciousness. So I invite you to set an intention of what you want to manifest, to allow yourself to receive the activation. And then of course, to give yourself some space after you've listened to it, to notice what inspired ideas come to you and then take action on that. <laughs> and let us know what happens so we can celebrate with you. Oh, I love it. Okay, so everybody, <laughs> don't forget to snag that. When I send the email at the end, don't ignore it. You guys want these free gifts, okay? And um, Louisa, how can people follow up with you really quick? Oh, um, I'm on all social media platforms, not TikTok. So <laughs> Instagram. Yeah, I'm not there Facebook. yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll get my head around that one. Uh, Facebook, I hang out mostly on Instagram. My website's www.louisahavers.com. Or you can email me at louisa at louisahavers.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Louisa. I I got so much out of that. I see that, that our guest did too. And I just really want to thank you for your contribution and your energy that you, you've just poured into us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Katie. Thank you, everybody. It's been an honor.